started. I'm the owner of Little Butterflies LLC. Okay. I'm a mother of two wonderful children. Um, and I'll be using a lot of my own experiences to get me through this. So don't mind me if I start talking about my children a lot. They're my best kept secret. Um, today, my goal is just to plant a seed. It'll be up to you to water it, to provide nutrients, and continue to grow. So God has chosen you to be that special parent. God gave you a seat and said, here, this is your child. So you must be something special if he's giving you one of my possessions. So today we're going to be going over building a foundation, um, children's health, the importance of play, children and finances, and then we'll talk about communication, and then we'll do a question, uh, questions at the end. So the first thing that I want you to do Building a foundation. So, all I want you to do is write down what is the vision for your child. Take a second and ask, and ask yourself, what is the vision that I have for my child? I want you to write down what your vision is. And then I want you to ask yourself, does your current environment support that vision? So what is your vision and does your current environment support that vision that you have for your child? We'll talk about at the end, we'll kind of go over that question again and then, you know, kind of dialogue if things have changed or if you have more, you know, questions and we'll kind of talk about that at, at the end. So we're going to roll right into the art of playing, the art of playing. When I think about play, it comes natural to a kid. When, you're, when a kid is born, they're naturally curious. They want to play with things. They want to touch it. They want to feel it. And so the best thing we can do is give them less batteries. Toys with less batteries. Toys to make them tinker. Toys to make them have fun, to be creative, to have creative thinking. Toys that have our puzzles. They can put things together. Um, toys that you can build. Blocks. Toys that I have back there. I brought some up here. This is open-ended play. So meaning you, this can be something that they use for engineering. This is a future architect. architect. Not only that, they can act it out as a person. It's open-ended. It allows them to use their creativity. So it's not a one-sided thing where you're giving it, okay, this is for exactly this thing. No, when you open their mind, they can be creative because they're naturally brilliant. And they're going to use their mind to create different things. They may create, build this and uh, build the moon with it or something. Hey, mom, this is this. And you'll see how creative and how unique they are and things that they're interested in. So open-ended play. Um, taking them outside and just exploring nature, touching and feeling things with their hands so they can see. And supporting children have the ability to learn on their own. They come to the world, they want to learn. As you can see, they're going to touch, they're going to feel, they're learning every moment that they step out. We don't need to over teach them. Just allow the child to play and the child is learning because they come here growing. Naturally, we think, oh, we got to teach, we got to over teach. I got to teach my kid their ABCs, I got to teach my kid this. Why can't we think that they're already brilliant? Why aren't they already brilliant? Why can't they be learning by looking at something and asking, once they ask a question, then you can just add to it and teach it. Whatever they're interested in, give them toys that, that help and build that curiosity. Um, so give them multi-useful toys like blocks and things. So we're talking about building and taking care of their room. A lot of time, I know I was a new mom, I mean, just toys, just packed, room just stacked, full of toys, just junk everywhere. So what do, what do I think? Why wouldn't my kid be, why wouldn't her mind always be working when I'm giving her, I'm overstimulating her? They don't need that much. Less is more, less is more. Get a shelf, put a couple things on that shelf. A couple blocks, a couple things for them to play, maybe a lockbox, they can use their hands, they can unlock and shut it, put high things in their little lockbox, use their creativity, maybe a couple little writing utensils on their shelf. Keep it nice and clean. As they grow out that toy, you swap it with something else, See what they're interested in, they're interested in this, 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 we're going to add to this instead of having it. If you even think about yourself as an adult, when you're life and you have too much going on and it's not organized, it's stressful. And we'll notice our kids won't even play with half this stuff, but we get it and, and they don't even play with it. So keeping things organized, organized, and giving them about three to four options to change out because this, about five minutes later, they might be interested in something else. So three or four things them interested they can change it out and keep it organized get a shelf with a couple things on it change it out and guess what it's going to help your pocketbook and it's going to help organization less stress for you to clean get them a little 
little tray. Okay, you're cutting today. Give them a little tray to cut on, to play on, to draw on. And then when they're done, they clean it up. So now you're teaching them organization. You're teaching them how to focus on something. You're teaching them how to clean up after themselves. It's so much value in just less. And so, do you guys have any questions about anything? Excuse me. babies to go to school and expecting them to be successful. Not only that, but it causes health issues. It causes child obesity. How many people, raise your hand if you know someone with diabetes. I mean, we all do, right? And it's affecting not our babies, our black and brown, it's affecting us in high numbers. Obesity, high insulin. So when you eat sugar, the insulin levels go up. And when you never give them a chance to go back down, it starts to seep into your pancreas and other blood streams and it never goes down. And then you become insulin resistant. So that's when you get those diabetes because you never allow that insulin to go down. It has to go up. And your body's trying because our bodies naturally heal themselves. Just naturally. So your body, your insulin levels go up and it starts to store the sugar and it goes into places it shouldn't. And we're doing this on a daily to our babies, giving them sugar, cookies, cakes, pies, and all of these things. When in reality, what they when they get hungry, they need vitamin D, they need vitamin K, they need vitamin A, they need vitamin E. So why can't we say instead of giving them chips, the grocery store has cucumbers for like a dollar? Cut up a big cucumber for less than a dollar, give them a slice of cucumber with a little, little dipping sauce. And especially when you start them young, they won't know any difference. That's all they'll know. So cucumbers, cut up some sliced pepper, cut up, give them some hummus and some avocados, some coconut flakes and and i know trust me i'm a mom so i know it's like i need you to get this and go but we can just if we can do that we gotta we gotta rethink our, and retrain our mind because we can get up we can go and have a busy day and just to give a slice of cucumber it doesn't take but five seconds in the morning to slice of cucumber the less box stuff we can give them the better because it's imperative why because we have a vision for our child and that vision is for them to be able to think clearly to change the world and so if we're thinking of box snacks if we, we want to do more fresh, but box snacks, stuff like this. This has two grams of sugar and one included. So that's three grams. So I know that I'm starting them off. If I do have to go box, get them stuff like this. Cheap, all these. Um, there's something called Yum Yum Snacks on um, Amazon. You can get them. They're little cheap, nice, healthy snacks. Get them some oatmeal smoothies in the morning. They won't know any difference if we start them out there. So kids get addicted to sugar. It's more addictive than crack cocaine. <laughs> it's more addicting than that. It's addicting. And not only that, when you are the biggest kid in class, if you think that's fun, <laughs> you got another thing coming. It's not fun to be the biggest kid in school. And we got to start talking about that. That's the reality. 
We gotta change that perspective of how we look at our children and health. Our babies deserve better. It causes nothing but harm. We give them melatonin gummies all day. We're, that's the new wave. In reality, what they need is less sugar and go outside and play. And guess what? That baby will go right to sleep after. So we have to start thinking before we just do this. Oh, what you giving your baby? A melatonin. We just do these things. Oh, here's a cookie. Oh, you be good. I'm gonna give you a cookie. That's creating bad health. Creating a bad relationship with food for, chat for your child. Oh, I do good. I get a sweet. Mm, and then when they're an adult, <laughs> then they emotionally eat. And then they have diabetes and health issues, cancers, and different things. We can't prevent everything, but we can start by trying. We can try to be preventable because our bodies heal themselves. Then you got cavities because our teeth don't heal themselves. Um, when you speak about the cavities, do my kids' baby teeth, are they affected? Does that affect their adult teeth? Yes, I'm gonna tell you, do your own research on that, but it starts in the gums. And so, yes, your teeth fall out, but still your gums. It's all around your whole body, your health. So you wanna start early, you wanna start training them with those habits. Any other questions? Okay. So, again, simply, uh, I like Simply Nature, but always do your own research, but I do like Simply Nature. And even baby food, look on the back of that jar. If it has more than five grams of sugar, then honestly, they don't need it. And if it has included sugar, that means so naturally it might have sugar. So let's say you have something and naturally it has sugar. When it has included, that means that factory has dumped a whole bunch of sugar in there. And that means you're getting not fructose, it's a natural sugar from, from, uh, from um, fruit. But then they're adding in other sugars that just are not healthy. Um, and here's the thing that you can do, take them to the store, make it a thing. We try exotic fruits. Hey mom, let's try this exotic fruit. You can go to Sprouts and they have all these different fruits from different countries and make that a thing. You're creating memory, you're creating healthy habits. Let's rethink, let's retrain how we think about food with our babies. And when they are eating, oh wow, you're eating those blueberries. Blueberries are gonna make your skin shine. Oh, you're gonna be so strong. Those cool blueberries have the vitamin E in them. So you let them know, oh, your skin's gonna shine. Oh my goodness, that red pepper's gonna have your brain so strong. Your tummy is saying thank you. Give them positive affirmations that, hey, I am choosing to be healthy. Yeah, they gonna want that cookie case in their brain. But sometimes you're putting it in that brain, you're putting it in them to think about the body. And that's all it takes is this for us to try. So the kids need three nutrient-based meals a day. And then when we're hungry, our body is saying we need more nutrients. So three, you need omega-3s, vitamins, and minerals. Okay, and a lot of us African American people are vitamin D deficient. One way to get it is one sunlight and making sure we're getting it through our food. So that's, I wanted to bring that up because a lot of African American people are probably everyone are vitamin deficient. But vitamin D is one of the big things, and so we gotta get ourselves. Give some, save some, and invest some. So she can give some to Chipotle. 
And normally, she can invest in whatever she likes, so that's something fun. Get them thinking about money. We want to plant seeds in our children. And then you have your life insurance policy. So once you have that baby, you got to start thinking about that. Because you never know when your time, your hour, your day is going to come or theirs. But you want to think about their future. So life insurance policy. Um, Xander, uh, they do, like, they can do well with Xander. And they actually will give you a whole bunch of quotes from all the different insurance policies. That's one that I know about. Um, Vanguard, Fidelity, those are all you can go right on there. It's an app on your phone. Just like we get on Facebook, man, take 10 minutes, get on Vanguard or Fidelity or look up many other accounts. Those are the two big ones. And set up your child a custodial account and start investing for your child. Number one thing is write a budget. Write a budget. You may make $30,000 a year and we'll go and buy a car that's $25,000. And we're making payments. And we think that's a smart choice. But if you sit down and you write your budget, this is what I have coming in, this is how much I have coming out. You can start with making 20000 and then you can get yourself out of debt and start growing your income and putting money up for your child. But it all takes time just to write this budget. Budget Nisa on um, YouTube is a great person. She uh, will help you write your budget. Why I thought this was imperative is because we're all starting, most of our people are starting to make we're starting the basement. We have to figure out how to do everything. We don't even know. We don't know how do I start a business. We're working in a job. We don't get to see our babies. You go to work eight hours a day. You come home. You're tired, and you living for a weekend. You living for Saturday and Sunday to come so you can be off. And you don't see your babies but a couple hours a day. And then they go and they are at daycare or wherever they're at. And then guess what? Now they pick up habits from this person and that person. And then that gets them off the vision and path that we have them because we're not around them. We're not influencing them enough. And not only that, who wants to get up and do something they hate to do every day? Our children watch what we do, not what we say. I want my child to see me living a great life so she can live a great life. And not only that, people that have come before me have fought way harder. I got information. We got it at the tip of our hand. On your phone, you can start a million dollar company. My grandmother, my ancestors, your grandmother, your ancestors, they didn't have that access. So it's imperative that you take the time to change your life, to make a difference, to make an impact on your child's life. God said, here's your seed. This is your seed. All your past experience, everything you've been through, I'm giving you this seed so you can help this child. She's going to need all the stuff that you've been through so that you can water and help her grow. Her dad, her mother, oh, they're going to need that. And so it's imperative for you to take the time to water yourself. To add a value to yourself so that you can add value to your child. It's imperative that you learn about health so that you can teach the child that. It's imperative that you take the time to learn how to budget and how to grow your money and not live in access and, and learn how to be subtle, learn how to budget and, and figure out what's coming in, what's coming out. Whether you start your own business or not, whether you choose to get higher education but continue to grow, read a book. You want your child to read, you gotta read. And so I thought that talking about finances and children, we have to make sure we understand. We don't want our children living in poverty and poor and on welfare and Section 8 and all these. That's not what we want. We want to look at it differently. We don't have to have that for our babies. You can wake up and say, I want to be a millionaire. And every day, figure out how to do that. You don't have to wake up and go to a job and sit in a cubicle. That's torture. That's pure torture. To sit at a computer every day and make someone else billions and billions of dollars. When you can do it too. When you got greatness in you. And not do it for yourself and for the baby that you brought into this world. Because they deserve it. They deserve greatness. But to give them greatness, you gotta figure out how can I be great? And you gotta make a choice every day that you wake up to choose to be great. And it starts by getting your life organized. So start by budgeting. Start my budget of your day, my time, write a schedule for my day. This is what I'm doing in my day. I'm waking up this time. I gotta go work from here, so that means I gotta take I gotta get my baby here. And then after two hours from my bed, I gotta focus on, on building and going to the next level. I gotta plan my meals for the day. Okay, it's, it's getting too hard for me to have this meal. So guess what? I gotta plan my meals. I gotta figure this out. There's no excuses to be made or to be had. There's just none. Any questions?
do you include your children in the budget when you write your budget and you do your budget? Um, do you include your children in that? Let them know how much is coming in. Um, they ask questions. I know when I take my son to the store, um, I kind of like, that's not in the budget. So I'm wondering, like, should I include him in the budget more so that he knows what I mean when I say it's not in the budget? Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. I typically don't do that, but I think that's a good idea. Um, for them to know, I typically, what I do is when my child gets her money, I show her this is what you can do, this, and I let her make her decision. But I think that's a great idea for them to see this is what it is, this is what's coming in. Um, now, when I get a little bit more, I don't want to stress them out. But I think it's good because then when they go to the store, oh, they want to start thinking, okay, wait, that wasn't, this is how much we had in the budget. Oh, I don't want to bother, you know. I think that's really a good idea to get them thinking, especially as they get older. I think that's really a good idea. Here, you got any questions? Mm. And then also offer an allowance. I think allowance is great. Um, and teaching them where to put their money. And also, credit card. My children have two credit cards uh, under me right now. Uh, I think it's Chase. You can get on your phone. Apple, they offer cards. You can sign up for your account. You can authorize users on your account. There's little things that you can start doing right now that's going to help them build a better future. They don't have to figure out how I'm going to pay for college. I want to go to college. Mom, they may wake up and say, Mom, I want to go to Spain. I want to spend a summer in Spain. You want to be able to give your child those opportunities. People that have seen stuff, they, we don't see it, so we don't think about it. You know, my mom can oh, I can go to Spain if I want to because you didn't see it. But give those babies that opportunity to wake up and say, I might want to go to Spain, I want to go to Africa. I want to see the world. But because we don't have the finances, we don't think about that. So I want to encourage you guys to talk, read, play every day with your child and create memories. If you didn't get anything out of this, I just pray that you talk, read, play, and create memories with your child every day. They don't need pain, they need time, and they need your energy. How do you get some time and energy? You don't work your butt at a job every day. You figure out how to get out of that cycle. So create memories, take them places. Go places, see things. Let them touch things you never touched, things you never thought about touching. Open their mind.